Coming up next on Good Morning El Paso, getting back on track. After exposing hundreds of babies to tuberculosis earlier this year, Providence Memorial Hospital is now in compliance. Also, <laughs> devastation for families this morning as the first victims from the Air Asia plane crash arrive home. The search now turns to the black boxes from the plane. And as we bring in the new year tonight, we're going to have to bundle up. Your Storm Track weather team has your complete coverage of what to expect. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. Begun, it has begun. The world welcomes in 2015. This is video of the celebrations happening in New Zealand. As for us, we still have a few more hours to go before midnight, but what a sight that is. That'll get you excited for tonight, right? Welcome back to Good Morning El Paso on this last day of 2014. I'm Hillary Florin. Stephanie Valle is off today. The time right now is 6.01. Those winds are howling and the temperatures are bone chilling. If you stepped outside, you don't need us to tell you that. Here is a live look outside this morning, courtesy of the exclusive ABC7 Mountain Cam. The ABC7 Storm Track weather team has been telling us about this Arctic blast that's been heading our way, and that's why the first alert was issued to begin with. So let's now go to our cold expert. I'll just crystal Clyde right now for the latest. You have a new title this morning. Isn't that ironic though? Because I don't like the cold, but this morning that is what we're talking. Take a look at these wind chill temperatures around our region. I don't like when we have single digits on the map and especially negative values. It feels like negative six outside in Rideau, so and five degrees TRC. Our wind chill temperature now at 11 in El Paso. That means a couple more degrees and we'll actually feel like we're in the single digits outside. 23, that is your temperature, at Las Cruces. And we do have a wind chill temperature of negative 11. Saving the best for last there over at Guadalupe Pass where the winds are strong and the air is cold. This morning, that is why we're under a first alert. Very cold conditions. So much so that it's really not safe to stay outside for too terribly long. Now on your first alert, we're going to be talking about the cold weather, but also about a rain-snow mix potentially moving into the forecast. And how about those cold temperatures and winds continuing for days to come? We'll look at all that coming up in your full forecast about 10 minutes from now. All right, we'll check in with you then. Thanks so much, Crystal. Many Many people here in the borderland will be celebrating the new year tonight, but some may get behind the wheel after drinking as well. There are a few things we can all do to help our families stay safe in these conditions on New Year's. We have Good Morning El Paso's Andrew J. Holt live right now with the details. Good morning, Andrew. Yeah, good morning, Hillary. We're out here on the west side near Mesa Drive where there's not too much traffic right now. Starting to see some of those morning people out, I guess maybe commuting, even though it's New Year's Eve. But as we will see later tonight, there will be a lot more people on the road and some possibly driving drunk around the celebrations, but there are some things that you can do to make sure you stay safe this holiday. Now, police have been seeing the seasonal increase in drunk drivers over these holidays. 27 people were arrested for drunk driving over Christmas from Christmas Eve until Sunday the 28th. Three of those arrested received their second DWI, and two of them received their third. Now, we've also seen the toll that drunk drivers can take on friends and families of victims this season. Isaiah Deal, his brother Joshua Deal, and Josh's girlfriend, Shannon Del Rio, all died as a result of an alleged drunk driver on Christmas Eve. 24-year-old Joel Garcia has been charged with three counts of intoxicated manslaughter after police say he admitted to having five beers and two shots before getting behind the wheel Christmas Eve. But there are things you can do to take extra care if you're out this New Year's. Police recommend driving defensively, take particular care around intersections, and be aware of the highest traffic drunk driving times of the night from 8 p.m. until about 4 a.m. We see uh, that certain times of the evening we see an increase in the number of DWI drivers, and we base that based on the number of arrests and the times that we see arrests. If you're going to drive, and you're going to drive in those hours where you uh, or where we traditionally see an increase in the number of DWI drivers on the road, uh, the best thing to do is drive defensively. 
And of course, if you're going to be out this New Year's Eve celebrating, do not drink and drive. It's as simple as that. There are so many other ways to get home if you have been out drinking besides getting behind the wheel. We've got some links, some more information on other services and ways to get home on our homepage, kvia.com, under the links mentioned section. So for now, reporting live on the west side, Andrew J. Polk, ABC7. Thanks so much, Andrew. Everyone be careful out there tonight. Three borderland hospitals will have their Medicare payments reduced because of the number of patients who got hospital-acquired conditions while being treated. In result, University Medical Center, El Paso Specialty Hospital, and Memorial Medical Center in Las Cruces will all be receiving 1% less in Medicare reimbursement payments this year. UMC was given the worst possible rating by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, a 10. Nearby El Paso Specialty and Las Cruces Memorial... Memorial Medical Center have a nine. For UMC, the 1% decrease in Medicare payments means a loss of $350,000. UMC officials say the decrease will not affect the treatment that patients receive there, nor are they experiencing layoffs. They say only 18 out of nearly 34,000 patients developed serious complications while in care within nearly a two-year time span. Now, as for Providence Hospital in West Central El Paso, it announced it is now in compliance with the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services. CMS was threatening to pull the hospital's federal funding for health and safety violations discovered during an inspection earlier this year. The inspection came after more than 800 babies were possibly exposed by a nurse's aide with active TB. We got a hold of the latest numbers released by health officials. Of the 860 patients identified, 847 have been contacted, 767 have completed the screenings, and of those screened, 11 came back positive, although seven of those are believed to be false positives and only four are true positives. Now, we also learned the city of El Paso has billed Providence more than a quarter million dollars for testing expenses related to the TB exposure. And now to the latest on the missing Air Asia plane. The wreckage has been found, but the rush is on now to find the black boxes to figure out what brought the plane down. ABC's Elizabeth Herr has the latest developing right now. Grief and devastation for family and friends. Some fainting, others sobbing after their worst fears are confirmed with the discovery of this debris field scattered over the Java Sea and this official announcement. The chief of search and rescue declaring, I confirmed that the area was where the plane crashed and the debris came from the missing plane that we have been searching for. The remains found about six miles from the last point of contact with the pilots about 100 feet deep where divers continue to search for more bodies. Back at the airport, items retrieved, including this blue suitcase and an oxygen tank, carefully gathered by investigators. We are greatly saddened uh, by the news. So far, the bodies recovered did not have life vests, meaning there was no time for passengers or the crew to sound the alarm. And the metal wreckage with burn marks could suggest an explosion or even fire. So once you have the debris, you look at it all. And um, fire stands out, explosion stands out. Was it ripped apart or was something else going on here? And to get some answers, U.S. Navy ships are on location equipped with sonar scans, which can actually map the ocean floor and help find the most critical piece of evidence, the plane's black boxes. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. It's 6.09, a live look at your commute this morning. This is a very still look, but some of our cameras have really been bouncing around this morning. There's a lot of wind out there. It's very cold. Loop 375 looking good. I-10 as well. Not too many people out on the road. Well, the future is here in West El Paso's Montecillo District. For the first time ever in El Paso, a private developer has taxation authority. What that means for residents and the rest of us. And attendance was very good for this year's Hyundai Sun Bowl game, but did that translate into strong television ratings? We'll let you know. And of course, we'll let you know about the forecast. Meteorologist Crystal Clay has been working very hard, already issued a first alert, and now we're seeing why. Cold and windy this morning, but there's also a chance of rain and even snow as we move through the forecast. We're going to look at all your advisories, watches and warnings, plus your future track model after the break. Thanks, Crystal. This is ABC7, where news comes first.